Hello everybody and welcome to your next Allegro 5 tutorial. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning about individual sprite animation. Okay, so some most of the time I would say like 95 to probably like 99% of the time you're going to be using a sprite sheet. And if you have a, a, a artist or something with with you then it would be it would make sense for them to do a sprite sheet for you. But if we look at this image in front of me, say we wanted to do this animation right here, okay? If you notice it, that they have, each image has a different height and a different width. And that could pose a problem if we were to do it in a sprite sheet because the algorithm that we'd use w wouldn't really work properly. There would be ways to work around it using sprite sheets, but it, it would be easier if you just handle them as different uh, images. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to um, how to actually do that. So uh, what I've done is that I've taken the image from last tutorial and I went on pixelice.com and I split it up into 12 different images. Okay, so from 1 to 3 is down, 4 to 6 is left, 7 to 9 is right, 10 to 12 is up. Okay, so one thing, one common thing we notice is with these directional um uh, directional images we're going by intervals of three right so uh, that will kind of help us greatly uh, n with other individual spreadsheets you might not have a set interval but for this we have a set interval so it kind of makes our life easier so what we're gonna do is that um, okay I've already kind of done some of the code but okay this is what we're gonna do Okay, f so for our direction, right, uh, what we did was down was set to 0 by default, left was 1, right was 2, up was 3, right? Uh, so then we, we, we did that for the source, so we knew where to start drawing from on our image. This time, they're just individual images, so we need to know which uh, index of the array it starts from. Now remember, array start at uh, 0, okay? So from index 0 to 2, that is going to be the down animation. From index 3 to, to 5, that's going to be a left animation. From index 6 to 8, that's going to be the uh, right animation. And from index 9 to 11, that's going to be the up animation, okay? So that's why we do this. This is our starting values, okay? <coughs> Sorry. Um, and then under or whatever, any way you want to put it, we have a constant integer called interval, and we set that to 3. So we know that um, we move by 3 intervals at, for, each in, uh, for each image, okay? So, uh, as for our loading algorithm before, our loading algorithm was basically we just did uh, AL bit, uh, Allegro bitmap and then we loaded in our player and we only had one image. The thing with uh, a lot of individual images, which is um, probably not the great side, this is why people don't really use them much, is that you're loading a, a lot of instances, right? It could, take up, it could take up a lot of memory depending on how many images you want or how many images you're losing, using, but uh, if you're using individual images then you have to be really good with um, deallocating memory, etc, etc. Uh, but for for 2D games, uh, most likely you really don't have to worry about that too, too much. But yeah, but like, uh, so then let's just continue with what we're talking about. So anyways, um, well, what I've done is that I made it an, a, a bitmap and I named it player walk and I gave it um, 12 elements within the array. Now, if you know how to use vectors, then it'll be better to make a, a, a vector, a bitmap vector. So if we, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a for loop, right? And we're gonna do player walk eyes equal to al underscore load bitmap. So if we look at our, the way I've done it is I've done it the uh, number scheme, so from one to twelve. So what we want to do is that we want to say load bitmap i plus one. The problem is that this is an, an integer, well i is an integer, and uh, it's looking for a constant char. So how do we do this? Or uh, The way we do this is that we're going to want to use a string stream. And what is a string stream? A string stream is, uh, like if you notice like IO streams, um, F streams, file streams, whatever, uh, streams are basically 
uh, like they have a lot of similar properties. They're, they're similar because they they str their string strings are like strings, but they they add a stream property. You could do more with them. You can uh, add additional functionality to them. And I'm not gonna get uh, too in depth with string streams. Um, like when I teach my C++ Made Easy tutorial series, I'm gonna get more in depth in them. But uh, for now, if you don't understand, if you don't know what they do, then you can always Google it for now. So to use the string stream, we do include a stream up there, and you can use the std namespace if you want, but I'm I'm not a fan of doing that. So in our for loop, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do string stream, and I'll just name it str, and in this you could either do that or just like you see out or or the f stream whatever you could put the name of it and then put whatever you want in the stream. Uh, so I'll do it like this. So in here, I'll just put uh, i plus 1. And then here, I'll just put str dot str to change it to a string. And since they want a constant char, then I'll put underscore c, sorry, underscore c string. And I'll change it to a constant char value. Okay? Now, the reason why I put uh, the std string stream, I create an instance within the for loop, is because... Um, String streams c concatenate just like strings, right? Uh, if we don't create a new instance of it, then it will say the first one. Say i is equal to um, zero. I plus one is equal to uh, z zero plus one will be equal to one. And then when you loop again, uh, one plus one is equal to two. So the the value of string would be one two. Then it'll loop again. It'll be one two three. But if we make a new instance of it, it's like it's like a clean slate right so then we therefore don't we don't concatenate so once we do this uh we'll have loaded all the images um from our folder the prop oh, well one thing we need to note right now is if i go to right here i split the images and i put them in a, sp a folder called sprites so we so that i don't run into any errors in my string stream i'll just put sprites and I'll put slash and then, uh, I plus one. Okay. So we've loaded in all our images. So now it's just a matter of choosing which images to draw. Okay. So first of all, we can get rid of our source X and source Y because we're not, we're not cropping out an image. So if we go to right, yeah, right here, we don't need this. So if we go to so we can get rid of all this stuff right here okay delete that okay so we're going to uh delete all this uh drop it matte re region and uh destroy for the destroy bitmap what we're gonna wanna do is just do four int i i is less than twelve and i plus plus and then when we destroy the bitmap we just say player walk and i so then we destroy all the instances of it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is one one other variable we want to create is a variable called uh, index and it's of integer type and we'll set the index equal to zero okay so the index is gonna tell us uh, which image to draw at the at a certain point okay so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that first of all we're gonna say that if active is equal to true uh and we're gonna have our else statement oh and uh sorry but we have to add in another uh variable so for direction what we're gonna do is we're gonna have last direction or you could have previous direction and th there is other ways to go about this sorry but i'm doing it this way because I'm doing it this way because 
it, it kind of helps with a lot of other things like single key presses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, well, well, like with other APIs and stuff with single key presses, having a la a previous instance and a, a current instance is always is always good. Uh, so this video is exceeding about ten minutes right now, so I'm just gonna be doing one thing right now. So where active is equal to true, what we're gonna be also doing is we're gonna set last direction equal to direction. Did I type that right? I don't know how I typed it up there. Oh, previous. My bad. Wow. Okay, so previous direction is equal to direction. And then what we're going to do is quickly before we reach 11 minutes, hopefully, we're going to say that if direction not equals the previous direction, then we set index equals to direction and we'll get into all this stuff later so hope you enjoy this thanks for watching and bye